Hey everyone, I'm Robbie Cornthwaite. I'm Daniel Mullen. I'm Angelo Costanza. I'm Marco Flores. I'm Marcelo Garuska. I'm Ian Fife. This is Cassio, and you're watching. 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 And you are watching Pure Bread Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV. Hi, I'm Daniel Mullen former Adelaide United player and Asian Champions League winner with Western Sydney Wanderers. When it comes to any of my soccer needs, I do my shopping here at Soccer Locker. An Australian owned and operated business, the store is located at Shop 5 of 181 to 183 Grange Road, Finden. Founded in 2017, Soccer Locker was introduced into the market to fulfill all the soccer related needs of Australians, providing a huge range of quality clothing and equipment ranging from soccer balls, team kits, goalkeeper gear, accessories and much more. Recently arrived stock also includes stunning retro kits from some of our favourite past eras as fans of the world game. Soccer Locker is a specialist in premier range boots, Adidas and Puma, goalkeeper gear and licensed merchandise. Visit us online at www.soccerlocker.com.au with free delivery Australia wide. So get shopping now at our Finland store, open from 10am to 5.30pm from Monday to Friday and open Saturdays from 9am to 3pm. Hello and welcome to the Purebred Reds Adelaide United Fan TV. I'm your host Ellis Gelios coming to you from the pristine Flow FM studios for yet another week. Disappointingly coming off the back of a very, very bleak 2-1 loss to our main rival Melbourne victory last time out, which was uh, a real sore point for me and many others. And uh, it's not looking overly great as Adelaide United fans at the moment. Plenty of questions, not many answers. Four games in, no wins is very concerning. We're in to preview the game against Western United Friday night. Uh, it's going to be a massive game for both teams, Western United in great form, Adelaide United in anything but, and uh, Western United now third on the table, uh, just a point off of first, so they're really looking good, Western United under John Aloisi, the South Australian legend, who is, of course, the new head coach there. If you're not travelling tomorrow night to the game, uh, it's 7.15, kicking off at Amy Park, and uh, make sure that you catch all the action live on Paramount Plus, as always. Just in terms of a little rundown before we get into the thick of it for the preview, uh, over the four meetings since Western United emerged as a club in the A-League, uh, this game has seen plenty of goals and plenty of red cards for that matter, but 2-0 uh, draws last season, which is quite interesting. The first two times both United's locked horns was arguably the most entertaining. Seven-goal thriller going our way. That was played at Witten Oval back in the 1920 season. Um, then we had, uh, the 2-0 all draws last season, um, and Western United, I think, are going into this game looking much the better side. Uh, let's talk about the Melbourne victory game. Uh, the 2-1 loss, really disappointing in the end. Uh, we did match them in part to the game, but at the end of the day, Melbourne victory, in my view, were always going to do what they did, and that's basically squeezing the game, uh, playing with a sort of counter-attacking mantra, but we needed to take our chances and we needed to firstly create chances uh, to have any chance in this game because Melbourne Victory player for player are a way better team and they were always going to utilize the counter-attack and that's exactly what they did, benefiting from mistakes and, and scoring the kinds of goals that we can expect them to score all season long under Tony Popovich. We know this is how Tony Popovich plays. Very disappointing that uh, they were able to win this game 2-1. First time they've beaten us at Cooper Stadium in years and really sucking the life out of our campaign at the moment because uh, at the moment it's not overly fun times being an Adelaide United fan. Four games, no wins. Carl Viet saying that he's getting philosophical um, about you know the nature of performances and not getting carried away about the fact that we're not winning games. Well, you've got to win games, Carl, and you'll be judged on your results. And right now, it's not looking good for you. Um, so, yeah, disappointing. And what, what I found even more disappointing about that Melbourne victory game was the crowd. A picture-perfect uh, scene was set at Cooper Stadium. Beautiful Saturday night at Adelaide, um, in Adelaide, rather. And it was just an 8,000 turnout, which is... Possibly our lowest ever game for a Melbourne victory at home. I don't think I recall seeing a lower one, and there's no excuses to make. The weather was great. 
Um, you know, you can go on all you like about the vaccine policy, but that is what it is. And I really, without having the data here, uh, would be backing myself to, to go out on a limb and suggest that I don't think that would impact things that drastically to the point where we're now getting 8,000 people out to a game. Uh, so that was really disappointing. And given that it's Western United that we're traveling to on Friday night, is this almost like the... Um, you know, the struggling for fans, Darby, um, considering that uh, we're both Uniteds and um, <laughs> we want to make this some kind of rivalry given that they're a Victorian team, but both clubs not doing very well for uh, fans turning out at the moment. That is for sure. Now, getting into the previous side of things, uh, it is significant to note that it's the first ever time that John and Ross Aloisi will face off against one another as opposing coaches. Ross being our assistant coach, John Aloisi, obviously the new head coach at Western United. Um, they're very close. A lot's been made about... Uh, you know, the family-orientated mantra the Aloisis have, and uh, they've always been very close when they were players. And then, uh, you know, we know Ross is a club legend at Adelaide United. Unfortunately, uh, because he and John were so close during that time where Ross uh, was basically given his marching orders at the end of the 2007 grand final for his conduct, uh, John Aloisi basically, when it came to him coming to the A-League, snubbed Adelaide United and he said, no, nah, given the way they treated Ross, I'm not going to go there. And we missed out on, on bringing John Aloisi home, which would have been fantastic because, you know, during those years, we struggled so much for a nine. Yeah, we signed Van Dyke and he was good for a season, but Imagine had we had um, John Aloisi playing in his home state, you know, for what would have been his home club in front of massive packed out crowds every week. We, you know, could have done plenty for us. And uh, that's just one of the little things going on in the narrative here. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. Um, John and Ross, they're very close. First time they'll butt heads as opposing coaches. So I'm interested to see how that's going to turn out. Um, now, does Carl Viet change his back four? Going into the game from last weekend, he played Josh Cavallo, Jakobsen, Juande, and Tratt at right back. Well, I think inevitably he's going to change it because Tratt's not a right back. Um, I would suspect that Javi Lopez comes back in, but the question at right back that is, but the question that I really want to ask is, what are you doing with George Timothy? Why did you sign him, Carl Viet, if you're not willing to prioritise playing him in any way whatsoever? Um, I think he's done enough without standing out to at least merit some kind of opportunity whereby you don't just bring him in for you know, a stopgap purpose, and then he's out again the next week. Bring him in. If he's solid against Western United, even if we lose, even if we concede goals, just persist with him for a little bit. He's a young player. We know that uh, you know it's pretty remarkable that he got to play for Schalke in Germany, got one appearance there. Yes, it was a bit of a charity appearance with all due respect to him, but to get to that level, nevertheless, is a pretty impressive thing. And so I think you know it's logical that George Timothy, considering no one else is really reliable, like Jakobsen's now pretty old, Tratt's not really an established A-League player, He's been at other clubs, Perth Mariners, whatever, but he's not lasted anywhere. Um, bit of a stint overseas. You know, you can make what you want of, you know, his quality, but I don't think he commands a spot over Timothy, that's for sure. And I'd like to see Timothy get backed a little bit more by Carl Vitt. Otherwise, what are we doing signing him? Why, why not just bring in scholarship centre-backs? Because, you know, Timothy is not being utilised. It's just a waste of space having him. Um, so... Bring him in, I say. Um, now, Western United's resurgence under John Aloisi, is it real or is it just a honeymoon phase uh, since Mark Rudin exited Western United? I think it could be real. Um, you know, they're now three wins uh, back to back and I'd hate to say it, but I think John Aloisi is really gathering some steam at Western United. Many people probably didn't expect him to succeed, yet here we now are seeing Western United um, with all the troubles they have off the pitch in terms of you know, getting that um, that infrastructure up and running. They're up and about, three wins in a row. Um, you know, slender wins, and some of them have been pretty lucky. I think the Perth Glory one definitely was very lucky. Um, but, you know, nevertheless, they've done the hard work to get three wins, and they're just a point off top, um, you know, in a much better position than we are in. Um, now, I think, personally, Western United are a significantly better team on paper than us and probably on the pitch right now too. I'm willing to say it. I don't really care. I don't care that this is an Adelaide United podcast. 
And, you know, I'm just in this kind of frame of mind now where I don't want to give air to the shills. There's a lot of shills at Adelaide United who just want to beat things up for all their own narratives. And the reality is we're not really a great team right now. It's just pure facts. Um, on paper, there's a good front three there. There's a midfield that you can certainly work with, albeit it's not um, ideal in the sense that we're missing an out and out number 10, but still very much a midfield that you can work with, with plenty of players that you can use, a defense that's not good enough, and a goalkeeper who's had good moments is still young. Um, but is he the best keeper in the league? No. So that 11 for us tells its own story right now. We're not, we're not as good as Western United. It's just that simple. Um, and you know, it leads into something else that annoys me, which is why couldn't we bring Ben Garuccio home? With all due respect to Cavallo, I don't think he's a left back. He's a midfielder. You know, we can talk all day and all night about the fact that we've molded him into a left back. He's been adequate there. Uh, He's had some good performances, I think, against Brisbane Raw. He uh, certainly put his body on the line. But it's still us trying to stretch out, um, you know, a utility player in a position that is foreign to them. Um, Why couldn't we sign Ben Garuccio, who Western United have on their books now? Obviously, um, a guy that's gone to Hearts, he's South Australian-born, former Adelaide United player, came to us after our championship season, didn't have the best time, but did okay, got himself a move overseas, then came back. We missed him the first time he came back because he went to Melbourne City again, and then we had a second chance to get him, and again, we didn't get him, and he goes to Western United. It's just annoying. It paints a bigger picture of what's at play here, which is that we're just struggling to really sign players that aren't scholarship players, and we only have ourselves to blame for being in the position that we're in, and it's got to change quickly, and it's got to change against Western United on Friday night. My prediction is that I don't think it will change. Western United will win this game, I think, quite comfortably. And we'll be in somewhat of a crisis come Monday of next week. Uh, What do you think? Tell me how you think we'll go. Uh, Will we unlucky to lose to Melbourne Victory? Comment and uh, share the video. And thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Pure Red Reds, Adelaide United Fan TV.